Hi, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me for this free series of mini animal communications. This was really born out of everything that's happening in the world today with the coronavirus, so many people and animals being on lockdown. And, um, you know, I just really started to wonder what the animals thought about all of this. You know, we're watching the humans do, do their thing with the pandemic and the lockdown, and I really started to wonder how the animals were feeling about it. So that's how this series was born. And so today, we're actually gonna talk to an animal I've never talked to a snail before. <laughs> so a friend of mine sent me this, um, and she, let's see, my friend is down in the Palm Springs, California area. And she said they've been getting a lot of rain recently and all these snails started showing up around her house. So, um, I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't think I've ever talked to a snail before. So this will be an interesting adventure. <laughs> and as a reminder, if you're joining me live on Zoom, uh, if you look at the bottom, the bottom of the screen there on Zoom, there should be a, a button that says chat. So if you have questions for our little snail friend here, you can um, use the chat to send those in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get quiet and start tuning in to our little snail friend here and see what, what it would like to tell us. The first thing Thing I, I feel kind of come up is there's really a different level of consciousness uh, in this in this snail than a lot of the other animals I've talked to. There almost is this kind of I want to call it blobbiness in um, the snail's energy. So what I get is like there's something very ancient about this snail. The impression I'm getting, like I don't feel, it's more um, what I'm getting tuning into the snail at the moment rather than it having some message that it's communicating to me. And the sense I get is, um, and I hope I'm not going to totally botch this, what I'm saying is, so before this particular um, era, you know, a lot of spiritual traditions call this you know, the, um, the Epoch of Rainbows, uh, the Aquarian Age, this. And what I'm feeling is this sense of an earlier epoch where animals or even humans weren't so separate from each other in like their energy tends to kind of bleed into each other and there's this blobbiness type feel. I, I think the name of that epoch is called Lemuria. Uh, don't quote me on that, I'm, I'm not super um, educated in that, but I, I do get this feeling of um, blobbiness where energies tend to merge into each other a little bit more rather than each individual having a really separate boundary. So I wonder, yeah, I'm really just getting this sense. So I'm asking, I'm starting to reach out more to the snail and is there anything snail that you would like for us to know about you or your species? Yeah, it's showing me that like the slowness of its movements, how life just operates at this different pace for them than the majority of the other animal kingdom is what I feel it's saying. Yeah, it's showing me like the slowness of how it moves its body and how it is kind of blobby, but, but graceful how it's moving.
Yeah, there's this, um, the snail feels like right now, it feels like a really more down here on earth kind of animal. That's what I'm feeling about it right now, rather than there being this big spiritual or, or higher self kind of message. Yeah, it's shown me how there are just all these different kinds of life forms on the earth and he is showing it's more than just animals is showing plants and how humans tend to think that you know we need to move fast and be productive and all, this really fast kind of energy um the snail is showing how you know in humans minds that's what's important like this fastness this going towards some kind of productive something and the snail showing like that's just not really even a thing in its life like it's the snail feels more like i feel it resonating with the energy of the earth and there's this slow unfolding like as the earth energy is it's almost as if the snail is one with the earth energy and responding to it Like it sees its purpose as really being an extension of Mother Earth. Like we're not here to be productive. We know some animal might come along and eat us. Um, it's more about, there's almost the snail showing like this really earthy grounded vibration running through its body that he's showing it as me or it, she, I guess I'm not really sure, um, showing it as an extension of the vibrations being put out by the earth. It is showing like there is sort of a change in the vibration of the earth because of the coronavirus, what's happening snail i wonder if you feel like that's because the human impact has changed or is or is there something else hmm. so i'm not entirely sure how to how to interpret this but what the snail is showing me is the coronavirus being this vibration that came out from the earth, almost as if the earth um, somehow created it, or it was something that was inside, like the blueprint of it was already out inside the earth. And something, it's like, hmm, like the snail is showing the earth as this very, wise but complicated kind of technology within itself yeah it's just, it's showing like it's not about some um separate god entity like oh coronavirus uh showing the earth as as a you know part of god or part of this higher divine and um the plan just kind of or the plan the coronavirus as part of what's what's happening on earth kind of coming out from this higher this higher realm almost vibrating out through the earth okay that's that's interesting i wonder i feel like there's maybe a bit more there that you might want to share with us um Yeah, the snail is really showing the earth and, and all of its inhabitants as a whole system. And yeah, there's this sense that the snail is showing a bit of how humans have held themselves outside of that system. And there's, I keep seeing this almost like shaking of the earth or it's like a vibration that starts in the middle and starts to come out. Um, it's almost like the snail is showing, it's almost like a wet dog that comes in and and shakes and is shaking things off. Like there's a sense of um, the earth kind of, the, the wisdom within the earth kind of shaking things up.
Yeah, the snail is saying it feels it as a vibration that comes through its body. That's that feels like its main level of communication as far as like to the earth is the vibrations that come through the earth. Okay, so we do have some questions for you, Snail. Um, do you see do you see what's happening as a healing process or or maybe a purging process? Um, the way the way the coronavirus came out of the earth is what she means. Yes, it's saying it is it is kind of like um, again they're showing the dog like a wet dog shaking off the water. Um, there's a sense of purging and sometimes we have to purge in order to heal is, is what the snail is saying so is this about um do you feel like it's about purging certain humans or or is this like a bigger a bigger shake up it, it almost feels deeper to me than that um says, well, yes, it, you know, some people do have to die and, and it's saying, I don't know that necessarily it's about those specific humans, um, but it is a lot more about the shakeup that's happening. Uh, the snail saying, it feels like humans became too complacent in, in their system. Do you mean like economic system? Oh, just the way, their way of life, the way the way they are, um, it's very easy to, to sit on your couch and watch TV all day and um, to really not engage with things that are real and meaningful. Like it's easy to distract ourselves and snails, like I don't know, this is interesting, it's starting to show me like some VR kind of things, like actual virtual reality with goggles, not, not just using Zoom, but showing how there is like he's showing this trajectory like down the future of um how easy it can become for people to plug into technology things or showing like virtual reality what it what it could be like where where people want to to be in virtual reality rather to be in their own real reality they'd rather be plugged into a computer and and working than, than using their physical mod body and going out and doing things in the world. He's showing like people, if, if that is the, is that, if that is the route that we go, people are going to become very disconnected from the earth. And, um, yeah, so what he's showing now is all these vibrations that are coming off the earth saying that humans used to be very connected to that like they could predict the weather or he's showing me like the farmer's almanac like there is this way of um people being more connected to the earth and the nature cycles around them that um they just aren't anymore and the more we become plugged into technology rather than having this groundedness or connectedness to the earth uh, the worse he sees this trajectory for the human population will become. I've right, got another question for you here. Do you think that this is one in a series of the earth shaking off these layers and vibrations? Oh, definitely. Um, and it's showing me like some of the other past, I don't know if they would call it pandemics, if that would actually be a correct word, but like with the, the Spanish flu and the bubonic plague, like the earth does this sometimes to help shake itself up. Um, there's almost this sense of the earth reminding humans they are not actually ultimately in charge of everything there. Um, is it always about illness that is shaking things up? snail or, or are there other ways that the earth kind of shakes things up oh, no it's not always about illness um, it's showing uh, different natural disasters like volcanoes going up or earthquakes like the the earth is constantly in this state of trying to maintain a homeostasis or balance kind of situation and 
saying that the, the innate wisdom of the earth uses a lot of different ways to shake things up or to, um, yeah, to shake things up, shake things out, to get things more in line with its own vibration. Uh, do you feel like, Snail, that as a human race, we are like changing the vibration of the earth or is the earth itself so wise or has the knowing that it like keeps that vibration inside and then shakes things off? Well, humans are definitely trying to change the vibrations of earth. What we maybe not consciously or willingly, or that may not be how they see it. And it, the snail does feel like there is this sort of internal integrity or something like I see it as the core of the earth. Like there's always a knowing within that core of the earth of what the earth is or what it's supposed to be. And it's saying like, the future of the earth does not have to contain humans. Um, there's something more central and solid about the earth. Like the earth isn't just about humans is what the snail is saying. And the earth knows that and remembers it. And that is part of um, how the earth tries to keep its own homeostasis. Like homeostasis to the earth does not necessarily include humans is what the snail is saying. And um, that the earth is more concerned about its own balance and whether that ends up including humans or not is kind of up to us, but the earth is always going to keep doing these um, um, viruses or you know illnesses or different natural disasters to try to rebalance itself. Wow, that's really interesting. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm just blown away by some of the things that animals share. I really had no idea what to expect from the snail today, but um, this is some deep and interesting stuff. All right, so I'm going to do a last check here, see if anybody has any more questions for our snail friend. Um, do you, Mr. Snail, or I guess, do you, do, do you feel yourself as male or female or... I'm not even sure about snail reproductive um, stuff. There's this sense of being more asexual, like not female or male. But I wonder if there's anything else, um, snail, that you might like to share with us or anything else you want people to know about you or the situation in the world. So what, he, what it keeps showing me is like multiple snails like climbing on a wall or something and like a little kid coming by and flicking them off, you know, like, oh, this is a funny joke. Um, the snail is saying like, in, in a lot of ways, that's true about humans and the earth as well, where the earth kind of thinks those humans the same way that this little boy coming to flick all the snails away does where as a whole the earth doesn't necessarily consider individual human lives super important or more important than any other animal and the earth's view is kind of like yeah we could just come and flick off these humans they you know they don't matter as they don't matter in the same way that the snails don't matter to the little boy that's flicking them Is there any advice that you might give us or for getting through this? So I feel this message about um, significance and insignificance coming forward, um, where our individual acts, actions do really matter, but we also, um, have this have to have this view of ourselves as a part of the whole human race like how is our our human species doing things and moving hmm. 
Looks like there might be a little bit more there um, to unpack. Could you help me with that, Sam? Yeah, he, again, he's just encouraging us to take a different view of ourselves as individuals and as a human race. It's not that you aren't important. He's saying humans have had a huge influence on the earth, some negative, some positive. But he, it really wants us to remember that, A, we do matter, and B, we don't matter. <laughs> it's, it's this really interesting kind of paradoxical um, thing that the snail is putting forward here. I feel like I, I feel like I understand that. I really hope the viewers are understanding too. All right, thank you snail so much for joining us here today. And thanks to our viewers who've been joining us. I'm planning to keep doing these sessions till the end of um, April here. We just got word here in Colorado that our lockdown is gonna end, well, sort of end next week. So we're all looking forward to that here. But I hope you'll continue to join us if these sessions have interested you. And if you happen to catch this video still here in April and you think you might like to have a reading done for either a wild or domestic pet in your life, just send me a message and include a picture and name and age if you know that. So again, thanks so much for joining me here today. And until next time, take care and be well.